In this video, we will look at how to write, graph, and evaluate a piecewise function. A piecewise function is a function that uses different rules or formulas depending on the interval of x being used or on the domain of the function. The intervals on x should not overlap, otherwise it wouldn't be a function, but the intervals can be infinite. The pieces can connect, but they don't have to. Let's take a look at an example. Here I have a graph of a piecewise function. Notice there's three pieces, one, two, and three. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to write this function out in function notation and show each of those three intervals. So here's how I do it. I'm going to write f of x to represent the function of x equals, I'm going to make a brace here, nice room here for three different intervals to represent all three places. And I'm going to start with the one on the left, and I notice that it goes from negative 9 to negative 5. doesn't include negative 9, but includes negative 5. And I notice that it has a constant value of 3, so I'm going to put 3 right here. Because anything in that interval, I wrote a comma. Some people like to write the word if. I'm not going to do that, but it's okay if you do. And the interval is from negative 9 less than, notice I didn't put equal, to x less than or equal to negative 5. So between negative 9 and negative 5, not including negative 9, but negative 5, it's going to have a value of 3. Now the next interval is a little more complex. This one is not a fixed or constant value. It's actually a linear equation. And we can count the slope here. We can tell it goes down 1 and over 2. Uh, so that's a negative one-half slope all the way across. And if that continued, we'd go over to here. And we notice that it would then cross y halfway between 2 and 3, or at 2.5. So I know how to write that linear equation. Uh, that's a negative one-half x. Slope is negative one-half. And then plus 2.5, because it crosses at 2.5. That's my y-intercept. And that's for the interval beginning at negative 5. And let's see, we'll put that comma over here. So that's from negative 5, not including negative 5. We already included it above. And then going all the way over to, looks like, negative 1. And it is a colored in circle, so it is included. So I put the less than or equal. And that's the equation for that interval between negative 5 and negative 1. The last one is a little bit different. This time it kind of makes a part of an inverted parabola. So I've recognized that that looks like the parent function of a quadratic, but inverted. I know that parent function is x squared, so inverted should be negative x squared. That means if it's at 1, it should go down 1. At 2, it goes down 4. At 3, it goes down 9. And that's what this one does. So that means that's the equation negative x squared. And I'm going to go ahead and write this interval first the way I normally would. I'm going to say it's between negative 1, and I'm not going to include negative 1. It was included above. And then it goes all the way, this time it just continues. So it goes all the way to positive infinity. So if I wrote that, it would do this. But that's really not the way I write an interval like that. I don't say to positive infinity. I say that x is everything that's bigger than negative 1. So let's go over here and rewrite this in, in the correct way. We'll just take that off. And we'll just say it's every number where x is greater than negative 1. And notice I don't put the equal because negative 1 was included in the interval above. And that is my function written out in function notation. That's my piecewise function that represents the graph on the left. So here are all of my intervals that are included in the piecewise function. And so now we can use this to actually solve problems. So if we know a value of x, we should now be able to find a y. So let's try one. Let's see. Let's do x equals 2. Notice that falls up above in the interval x is greater than negative 1. Therefore, I have to use negative x squared for my 
equation and I plug that in. 2 squared is 4, make it negative. So the y value would be negative 4. I can see that on the graph by looking at x is 2 and going down and seeing that it does hit at about negative 4. Let's try another one here. Let's say x is negative 7. Well now it falls in the first interval and anything between negative 9 and negative 5 is just equal to 3. So that's an easy one, a constant value. And so we can see that negative 7 falls in that interval and that's an easy one to do. How about, let's try one that falls in the middle interval like negative 2. So the middle interval is a little bit more complex. We plug negative 2 in for x times negative 1 half, that's positive 1 plus 2.5. That tells us that y in this particular one would be equal to 3.5. Again, I could look at the graph and tell roughly that when I go negative 2 and go up, it's at about 3.5, which it's supposed to be. So that's an example from each of those intervals. There's one more we really haven't looked at, but it's very important to understand. Everything doesn't always fall there. Let's look at this. What if x is negative 10. Well, negative 10 doesn't fall in any of the three intervals, and if you look at the graph, there's no value on the graph where x is negative 10. Therefore, the y value has no solution for negative 10, and in fact has no solution for any value less than or equal to negative 9. And this is a piecewise function written as a graph written out in function notation, and then this is the way you use it to actually solve problems when you have a piecewise function. I appreciate you watching this video. I hope that uh, you'll leave me a comment below to let me know what you think of piecewise functions and uh, how to solve them. If you found this video useful, I would appreciate it if you would click the thumbs up button to like the video. And if you haven't subscribed before, hit that subscribe button. Help support the channel and help me to keep making more videos for you. Also, you can visit my website at mymatheducation.com for more information and problem-solving steps, as well as some social media links. You'll find the link along with other links of interest in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and thanks for watching the video.